straight years, Ricky Carmichael has been searching for his match. For eight straight years, Carmichael has been alone at the top. Eight AMA motocross titles with two perfect seasons equals one perfect outdoor career. The next in line to try to break RC's reign is James Bubba Stewart. The 125 CCAs who has never been straight up beaten for an overall win in AMA motocross. With RC and Bubba grabbing all the attention, front runners Chad Reed and Kevin Windham are hungry to make a statement early. AMA Motocross is finally here. This is round one from Hangtown on OLN. Hot Motocross Racing will be matched only by the temperature here today. It's already in the low 90s. This telecast presented by Parts Unlimited. And with a nice crowd on hand, the only thing rising higher than the temperature is the anticipation of the AMA Motocross Championship season presented by FMF. 250 motocross action here today near Sacramento, California, the Prairie City Park called Hangtown and a nice crowd on hand. Thousands of people who have come here to enjoy it with us. I'm Brian Trevor along with David Bailey in the booth. Rebecca Staub working with Pitts for us here today. And David, so much anticipation because we have two riders undefeated in outdoor competition, starting with Ricky Carmichael. And I think you have to give the nod to Carmichael because he was able to wrap up that Supercross season and begin testing the new 450 Suzuki. As you can see right here, this is out in Southern California, putting laps in. I talked to some people that were out there, and they said he was just doing moto after moto. While James Stewart, on the other hand, has had a lot of injuries to nurse, I don't think he's coming into the season quite as prepared, but this kid is magic. Whatever it takes is what he's able to get done when it counts. And he'll still be riding one of the two-stroke machines. Look at the stats between these two. What a great matchup. And the most impressive one from Carmichael there is he's won 65 of his last 70 motos. 28 wins in the last 31 starts for James Stewart, but he's going to be riding that 250 and coming from behind every time. I have nothing left to prove, really. I really don't. All the pressure lays on... Uh, Lays on everybody else because they're, they're in a must situation. I know how to win outdoors, and it's, it's going to be good. You know, I think it's just going to be who can be consistent, not necessarily who's going to be the fastest for 24 motors. The proof this summer is to beat the guy that's never been beaten. He's never been beaten outside, and you know I haven't really, you know, been beaten outside either. You know, you got two guys going together. That's all we know is to win out here. So that's going to be the good challenge. If I beat him outside, I think it's, it's going to be good. If he beats me outside, it's going to be good for him too. And there's a bunch of great guys. Bubba is fast. There's no doubt about it. He's a great rider. He's a great athlete. And, uh, you know what? It's the first race, and uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, we got 24 motos ahead of us, and uh, you know I've been down this road a time or two. I feel that uh, if I need to make an adjustment, I can. But uh, there, there's there's a lot of people out there that are riding really good and that want to step it up. But I guess I'm in a great position now, wanting to beat me, so it's good. Somebody definitely has to lose. There's a lot of pride that's going to get swallowed, you know, this weekend and the next 11 races after this one. So hopefully it ain't me. I mean, um, you know, I feel good and I'm really in shape this year. You know, I'm really having fun. So one of us is going to have to lose, and um, we'll see. Well, this was yesterday's practice. James Stewart cut the track, tried to get out there and get in the clear so he wouldn't have so much traffic. Carmichael found him, and this is what went on for several laps. Carmichael was actually able to close that gap a little bit. Chad Reed was faster than both of them in the first practice, so I can't wait to see how this turns out. Chad Reed, the principal rival for Ricky Carmichael in Supercross, of course, taking a title somewhat in Carmichael's absence. There are also a number of rivals. Kevin Windham on the Honda four-stroke. He has been consistent and very good indoors. We'll see how he fares outside as well. Windham is always one to watch. Now, let's go to Rebecca Staub with Kevin Lee. May 27th, 2001. That was the last time that anybody other than this man has beat Ricky Carmichael. And we're standing here with him, Kevin Windham. Now, all the hype has been whether or not James Stewart can actually beat Ricky Carmichael, but you are the only one in the last four years that actually has. So what's it going to take to do it again? Well, it's going to uh, take a, def a good ride for sure. And, and uh, the level of competition has stepped up. It's nice to have Bubba there. And uh, Chad's riding strong. And, and I am as well. So, uh, you know, it's just going to take some flawless riding. Ricky's a great competitor, the winningest rider of all times, and uh, you know, it's it's kind of depressing to, to me being as a competitor to even be standing here having this conversation because those dates go so far back. But 
We plan on uh, making an exciting season and changing those things up here in 2005. For a long time. We've seen challenges rise up to meet Ricky Carmichael, but we've seen him fend off all those challenges here at Hangtown. It'll start from pole. He is the guy to beat as we take a look at the Honda starting grid. Well, Kevin Wyndham already has beaten him here. We heard from him. Chad Reed beat Carmichael on his home turf in Daytona. This is what he considers his home turf, the outdoors, and I'm sure Chad will be bringing that same motivation. They got him to win in Daytona. The track is completely different this year. They've added a lot more topsoil. I'll tell you what, Brian, I rode around it after the practice yesterday. It's the roughest I've ever seen it. And the lap time is quite a bit longer. They want these guys to really work hard today. Well, working hard favors athletes who are in good condition. That would be Ricky Carmichael as we get set to go. The gate drops and Carmichael launches out into a very, very good start. He's not the first one into turn number one. Instead, it is the number 24, Ernesto Fonseca, but Carmichael quickly in control up on the inside. Now he's chasing Fonseca, but with a lot more speed, he's going to take over the front position here. It looks like he has position in this left-hander as uh, Fonseca is shuffled back into second position. Lands hard and gets rammed by Chad Reed. Oh, what a pileup. Bubba, Bubba Stewart is in there. Well, it looked like Fonseca just got sideways on a braking bump right there. They just watered the track. He slid a little bit. Kevin Windham plowed right into him. Chad Reed got caught up in that. Tim Ferry over there to the right, number 15. Roderick Tame. It's James Stewart off to the right. So all the players were up front. This is what the crowd came to see. Now it's all broken up, and Carmichael is already gone. Well, there may be a few uh, sadistic ones in the, in the crowd here that'll be wanting to see these guys chase. Look at the problem for Windham. He's looking down at either the foot peg or it's hard to say, maybe the shift lever got bent. But that starting from dead last, I mean, it would take him several laps to catch the last place riders. You don't get points until you get inside the top 20. So this is a disaster for Wyndham. And a very, very big benefit for Ricky Carmichael. It looks like the later laps of an outdoor motocross race with the lead that he has already. Carmichael can really rest easy. Take another look at this disaster. Well, it looked like Fonseca braked a little bit to try not to run into the back of Carmichael. It was just a chain reaction. James Stewart, Kevin Windham, and Chad Reed, all contenders, guys that are capable of beating Ricky. They're not going to have a chance this moto. And you know, Ricky says all the time, he goes, you make your own luck. And that was a good example. He got the start, made the pass to the lead, and it was mayhem behind him. And the number 12 is David Gulliman now in running in second position. A battle for second, if you can call it that, really uh, is so far behind the leader, Ricky Carmichael. And now it appears as though uh, Gulliman pretty much has control of the situation here with Travis Preston running behind him. And now we pick up the number 12, Gulliman, and there you can see how much of a lead he has over the third place ride. You know, Philemon has done well. He's won here before on the 250, back when they ride two strokes in the 250 class. And uh, last year he put in a solid ride here, I believe, for a podium. So he's comfortable on this racetrack. It's very technical, and that's what David is good at. And a solid ride for Preston. He's thinking about practicing. He's getting faster and faster on the big 450 now. So this is a rookie season for him on the big bike and the big class. So far, so good. Well, you were absolutely right about the track being extremely difficult. I think gnarly is a term that would have been used. Chad Reed seems to have recovered fairly well and is uh, running inside the top six positions or so as we continue to look at what's left of that huge pileup three or four turns into the first lap. Well, there finally is James Stewart coming through just to the bottom of your screen there in the gray. There's Fonseca pulling the tear off, and now here's the problem. Big problem here is the Honda team is trying to make repairs on uh, Kevin Windham's machine and keep him cooled off at the same time. You know, he's a little hot under the collar at what happened to him as we take a look at a fourth place battle there with the uh, number 55 machine, Joseph Aloff, trying to hold off Chad Reed. That's a good ride for Aloff because he just switched teams. And for Chad Reed, this isn't bad, but considering what happened to him this morning, the downhill double they're approaching right now is where he crashed, hit his head, and he is not the same guy right now. So Ricky's challengers are, not only are they back in the pack, but they're all having problems as well. It looks like a shift lever for Kevin Windham, and there's not going to be any way for him to score points this morning. Nice inside move there by Chad Reed to take over the number four spot blow to a guy that could have won here you know I mean right now that, that whole team you can see them holding their heads down a little bit knowing that that's 25 points they're not going to get and you know when you're trying to beat somebody oh no Stewart going down again oh and he looked like he was going so well went for an outside move now the frustration of having put it on the ground a second time in the same photo he's got to get on and get it started at least it's one of the two strokes and it's a little easier to do but we're going to take a short commercial break here two disasters for Bubba Stewart can he recover from either or both 
Parts Unlimited presents the AMA Motocross Championship by FMF. From Hangtown, Ricky Carmichael out in front. Big lead beneficiary of a first lap pileup. Looking good. And look who's right behind him, Brian. That's Kevin Windham. When, as soon as he pulled back on the racetrack, of course, a lap down, he jumped in right behind Carmichael, and he's been keeping his pace ever since. Carmichael just on cruise control here. Doesn't have to worry about Kevin Windham. His next closest actual competitor on the same lap is quite a ways back. He's cruising, but James Stewart had a problem. Well, he got together with another rider right there, ran out of room, and just went straight over the top of the hay. It looked like he just accelerated into it, too, like he didn't try to miss it. And he's already got enough problems. And he looked like with the pace he had, he'd probably get, be able to get in the top four, maybe even top three. But now I don't see any way possible. Now, this is a pass being made by a fellow that, okay, stick with me on this name, all right? It's actually pronounced Use Lanso, but we all call him Juice. I talked to Jim Hawley, who's been screaming at him out there, training him a little bit and helping him out financially. He said, yeah, we call him Juice. And this kid is, he's an unknown, but up here in the top 10, looking good at the first national, just made his pass on Aloft. He's still trying to get used to that RMZ Suzuki. Good ride for Juice. He is from the Baltic Republic of Estonia, now makes his home in California, and adapting quite well. David Philemon is the runner-up in this race right now, behind Ricky Carmichael, some distance behind him, in fact. But Philemon also uh, really showing some great form here at the opener of the outdoor season. You know, we just watched Carmichael go through the same section, and he's, Ricky's just, you know, that's why he has a big lead, and he's building it lap by lap. He's just a little bit quicker to get on the power, a little bit more flawless, but still a great ride from Billiman so far has opened up a huge lead over third place. I mean, he could back his pace way down and still hang on to second in this motor. Well, he too benefited from the big pileup, and with all due respect to David Billiman, uh, he is where he is because of a Stuart Chad Reed and some of the other favorites are nowhere to be found at this point except very deep in the field. That's how far he is ahead of third. Still Travis Preston hanging on. I'm surprised that Preston is keeping his gap with Billiman because when it gets this technical and Billiman's riding well and expects to ride well, he's done here, uh, you know, one here in the past, like I mentioned before. Seems like he'd be able to get away from Preston. There's a mechanic out there going, come on, get some smoother lines. You see his gap back to fourth place, too, so he can afford to get a little bit more experimental out there and try to find some better lines to try to perhaps make a move on Billiman down the stretch. Sixth place battle, Joseph Aloff goes back to fight with the number 16 of John Dow, both on Suzuki RMZ 450s, and this uh, is pretty much the closest race on the track right now in the top 10. Yeah, it's pretty spread out. But, you know, Joe, this is a great start for him, and he's just having riders one by one come up and start to peck at him. Now John Dow, probably the oldest guy on the track, 39, and he's chasing the... Uh, I think Olaf just turned 30, so these guys have been around a while, but their effort and their desire is still intact, and they're running up front in the top 10. A little bit lucky because of the pilot that took place in the early laps, but that's motocross. A very, very rough track is going to demand a smooth style because, as you know, David, not only is this smooth fast, but also saves energy. These guys have to start up and do it all over again in the Olaf section. And they're, they're at that part of the moto, too, where they're starting to think about that. Of course, you know, Alov's got a little pressure here with Dowd coming up on his, on his rear end. But they're starting to think about late in the race how the track's changing, what they might want to do to their suspension for the second moto. And also, you know, as it dries out more and more, they might want to change that front tire and get things to stick a little bit better. But they'll probably still stay with a soft tire in the rear because of the start. I was also thinking about conserving their own energy as well because if you use it up in the first moto, you've got nothing left in the second one. And this track is using some people up. Well, you know, I'm just going ahead and assuming that these guys are all prepared. <laughs> you know, if you start worrying about your fitness, and, and you know, some riders do. I mean, I did for, you know, until I got in shape. I think that's the big difference between, you know, what's going on with Carmichael up front. Down making his pass right there was just a mistake by Aloft that allowed that to happen. It seems like it was going to happen sooner or later. But, uh, you know, these guys are fit. Dowd is, he's older, but he trains, and, you know, I don't think he worries about how much energy he's going to have. He just gets out there and goes fast and throws throw that checkered flag. Now, here's James Bubba Stewart, who had a lot of work uh, under his belt to get to the position he was. Then he had a second tip over. He had to start all over again past the same guys that he went by once already. Well, you know, when I saw him go down the second time, Brian, I was keeping an eye on where he was in the racetrack, and every time he went off the jump, he was looking over to see where the leaders were. He knew exactly what was going on, who he was going to have to pass. But he, he kind of dropped his shoulders a little bit when he got up the second time. Like, man, it's a long way to go from here. But still, every point counts. There's the mechanic, Jeremy Albrecht. 
really trying to make sure he's giving him exactly the right information and, you know, keep him excited out there. Like, I think he saw that posture, too, starting to go away. He's trying to get him fired up again. Another look here at the uh, the number 70 machine running in second position right now, Travis Preston. Uh, he's coming under attack, though, by Chad Reed, and Reed is right behind him. Yeah, I think Reed is starting to just kind of, as this moto unfolds, he's starting to feel like himself again. You know, I mentioned earlier, he banged his head pretty hard. I talked to his, his agent, Bobby Moore, and he said, man, he's, it scared him pretty bad. So, you know, luckily for him, he doesn't have to deal with Wyndham and Stewart up ahead of him. He should still be able to get in the top three of this moto if he can make this pass. He's not going to catch his teammate, Villeman, but he's not going to lose as many points as he probably thought he would earlier this morning when he was asleep in his motorhome. wonder if he's even going to race today. Making that correction, it is a battle for third spot. Gulliman alone in second, and Ricky Carmichael all alone out front. But here we have Chad Reed, Travis Preston for the final spot on the podium. And Reed, while he caught Preston, has not been able to get a lot closer or close enough to make a pass. Well, it's difficult. You know, you can catch a guy, then when you get close, you know, he may be taking some of the lines you want to take, plus the roost coming off that bike. You know, we don't feel it sitting here, but I'll tell you what, you know, if you get out next to the track, you better watch out. There goes Reed down the inside. Uh, it's actually where he fell this morning, so it's nice to see him rebound in that spot. But that roost hurts, Brian, and sometimes you got to kind of lay back for a bit, kind of study what the guy's doing and stay out of his roost. It also keeps your vision good and then make your move all at once. It looks like that Reed did. We'll take another commercial break here. Here's the way they line up in Moto 1 right now. Carmichael, you lead it. Five AMA Motocross Championship is brought to you by Suzuki. Lightweight, superior power, incredible handling. It's why champions choose Suzuki. And by Honda, the company that defines performance in motorcycles, ATVs, personal watercraft, and scooters. Well into the race now, Ricky Carmichael out in front. Looks like a training ride for him, riding an extremely good pace, very smooth, and no one's going to catch him. Well, it's funny you brought up training ride, Brian, because I think some of his training rides are actually harder than this, and that's the whole point. Ricky works so hard that when he lines up on the gate, he's going, I deserve this win. It belongs to me. I've worked the hardest, and, you know, he expects to win when he lines up, and the way he attacked Fonseca, that opening, you know, 500 yards or so. I mean, he, he doesn't like to be behind for even a few turns. He wants to get out front and do what he knows he can do, which is just pull away. And, you know, looking at Stewart, that's what he's always been able to do. Of course, riding that 125 last year against all those 250F four strokes, he's no stranger to having to come from behind, but he didn't have to catch Ricky Carmichael. You know, and that's going to be a lot tougher. And he's riding a two-stroke against four strokes again this year. How much more difficult or easier, perhaps, is it to be on a, on a mismatch in equipment? Well, I think the mismatch was a little bit worse last year than it is this time. Because in a 250, it can make that thing pretty fast. And this track is tight enough, especially where he is right now, that he can zip in and out of there on a 250 and possibly make up for some of that torque those guys have going up the hills. But the bottom line is James is going to have to work extra hard just to maintain the same pace as Carmichael and you know I think Ricky's got more experience and probably at this point in his career a little bit more fitness and confidence in his fitness than James does and so it's, it's going to be a tough season for him but you know what that's uh he always amazes us and I'm sure he will again tremendous athlete I'm also very impressed by how deep the ruts are we saw James just about get the front end heavy there as he's riding in a rut behind John Dowd right now Dowd you would have to figure is taking the preferred line maybe a little bit defensive now Stewart pulls up alongside and maybe the inevitable has just happened he was really coming hard well you know he just brought up those ruts and and uh, how rough they are I mean look how much these guys are fighting the motorcycle I mean everything that they do out there requires just it's like doing a, a rep, you know? It's so difficult to balance the motorcycle in, in all these ruts. Carmichael having a, a moment. He, he got lucky right there because Jeff Alessi to the right, this drug, I couldn't tell who the other rider was, just drug his bike out of Ricky's way. These guys are fighting it every step of the way. They've got to be so strong, and so far, Ricky has proved that he is the strongest. He picked the right rut in that particular case, and there are multiples of them in some of the more, uh, in some of the more difficult turns. As Bubba Stewart had getting around and Timmy Ferry made one move and went by. Well, you know, it's like, where did he come from? Well, remember that pileup? He was in it, and he has been riding really strong ever since, starting to slice his way through the pack. I don't think he's going to catch his teammate Chad right here, who won't catch his teammate Villeman either, but 
Still a pretty decent showing for Yamaha despite that opening lap. Well, for Chad Reed to get up off the ground and all the way up to third, he had to get his work done in a hurry, and now he's reaping the rewards of that, where he's sitting in third spot, a podium position, and he can hang on to it without a whole lot of effort right now. And as you said earlier, start to plan for Moto2 and maybe an improvement. Well, I have no question that in my mind that Chad will be able to, he'll be tenacious enough to get after Ricky during the series, but he might get too late of a start. That's what Ricky does. He puts the pressure on you early. Keith Moss making a move here on the number 55, Joe Aloff, who continues to lose positions. This is for inside the top 10, and it is also within the last lap of the race. Final lap here at Hangtown. Look at how tired these guys are. You can see Boss is just he's a bulldozer. You know, he's so strong. That of course, he's going to make that pass. Joe, is, he's doing pretty good, but he looks like he's starting to just doesn't have enough energy to fight off a guy like Boss right now. And speaking of energy, this kid's got an endless supply. Ricky Carmichael, by comparison, everyone else looks like they're struggling, and Carmichael looks like he's on a Sunday stroll in the park on his way to another victory in outdoor motocross and uh, to begin perhaps another perfect season. Well, that question will remain unanswered for a while, but who's the man here today in moto number one? Ricky Carmichael is the absolute positive answer to that question. He was lucky enough, to, well, good enough to be out in front, lucky enough not to get involved in the spill, and now he is the winner. Photo number one here at Hangtown. And that's got to feel good for him. And maybe even a little bit of a surprise because with all the talent coming in, a brand new bike, new team, you never know for sure. And here's David Pullman doing a little bit of goon riding to finish second. We'll be back. This big crowd here at Hangtown is ready to hear from the winner, Ricky Carmichael. So are we. It looked like your position was pretty well set by the third turn. Just kind of feels like old times, doesn't it? Uh, it does. I tell you, it's great to be back outdoor and especially to uh, to get a win. I was on a dry spell there towards the end of the Supercross season, and I felt really good. And, yeah, like you said, I got out front quick, and uh, that was key today. And, and this was your first win on the new 450, so how did it feel riding that? Uh, it was awesome. You know, uh, the track is really, really rough, so it's really hard to use it to my advantage. But uh, I felt good, and uh, the, next, the next moto is going to be survival. It's hot out there. Our Honda Moto results, Ricky Carmichael, David Villeman, and Chad Reed will fill the podium with Preston and Juice rounding out the top ten. Let's hear from our runner-up. Hey, you seem to love Hangtown. Uh, this is your, uh, your second overall last year here. Now you're back up here on the podium after the first moto. Uh, what's it going to take to kick it up for the next round? You know, the track is uh, it's pretty tricky and kind of one line, so the, the style is really important. And uh, I got a good style. You know, I'm, I'm really happy with my, my Yamaha. It's working great. And, you know. So uh, I have to ask you, what was with the little goon riding over the finish line? Uh, it's kind of my uh, signature, you know. And uh, every time I'm happy, I do it. So I was happy to get sicker, so I did it on the last jump. Well, a nice ride and a bit of fun by David Villeman and a great ride by Ricky Carmichael, but nobody does more to protect your right to ride than the American Motorcyclist Association. Every racer on the track is an AMA member. How about you? Call 1-800-AMA-JOIN or visit amadirectlink.com. The AMA rights, riding, and racing. And now our Suzuki riding tip for Team Suzuki. I'm Rick Johnson, riding coach for Team Makita Suzuki, and this is your Suzuki riding tip of the week. Here at Hangtown, the Dirt Diggers were given a challenge to make the lap times longer. What did they do? Added a lot more turns. Here we're watching Davey Millsaps, number 188, and Ricky Carmichael, number four, manipulate one of the many S sections in this track. S sections are just plain old school. You got to be smooth on the entry, roll fast through the middle, and accelerate smooth but very hard. If you mess up one, you're the first one in the sequence, the rest is problem after problem. So smooth is always faster when it comes to S turns and that's your Suzuki riding tip of the week. In moto number two, we'll see if anyone besides Ricky Carmichael can make more than three turns without a mistake. Stay with us. A motocross championship series by FMF here at Hangtown, one of the more famous stops on the entire motocross tour to see if Ricky Carmichael can do it again in moto two. The winner of moto number one convincingly good start by the number four suzuki as he heads into turn number one maybe not the first guy in oh down they go kyle lewis number 23 he can't get past turn number one here in the second moto and it's usually kyle lewis who pulls the whole shot but this time ricky carmichael out front i don't see fonseca anywhere in there so carmichael with the lead once again he has all the players there Wyndham's there 
James Stewart is there to the left of your screen, and so is Chad Reed. So I don't know if Ricky will be able to win this moto quite as easily with all those guys getting through that corner that cost him the first moto, but all the players are in position to win this moto. If Ricky wins this one, he is for sure the man today. Chad Reed is there. John Dowd, who started right alongside Ricky Carmichael, is running in fourth spot. There goes James Bubba Stewart. The Carmichael starting to pull out a lead. Look how deep the ruts have gotten. Now David Bailey, they were bad enough in moto one. They're axle deep minimum now. That's a lot rougher, too. Look at the choice you have going into those. Now that when the... When they get that deep, they start dragging the bike, and you have to adjust your line accordingly, run your front wheel a little bit higher up in the rut, and Ricky is attacking these ruts so aggressive. It's as though he's riding the 125 right now, and he's already gapped those guys in that S-turn section. Well, you pointed into one of those turns, and all you've got is bad and ugly as choices. Here's Chad Reed in second position, not too far behind. Kevin Windham in third, pretty evenly paced one, two, three situation right now, and James Bubba Stewart still thrilling the crowd here, but we understand in addition to trying to recover from some injuries, he's also not feeling very well. Now I heard he threw up all night, food poisoning or something is what they suspect. And, and after that hard ride in the first moto, I'd throw up too. I heard he threw up between motos. So he is not feeling 100%, but you can't help it right now but to go 100% because there's everybody right there in front of him. Carmichael, Wyndham, Chad. If you can get around Ferry real quick and get to those guys, you might have something for him. Timmy Ferry holding on to the spot right now that Bubba Stewart wants. Uh, going for a tear off there, it looked like in the air. At least some adjustment took his hand off the bar just for a moment. Can't do that very often again. Through the deep ruts here, Timmy Ferry holding off James Bubba Stewart for fourth spot at the moment. See what I love about James, he never follows. He's got the guy in front of him going, which way to go? What, what's he doing back there? He's trying to cover the line and think about him. That's what you want to do. You want to make the rider in front of you nervous, start riding your race. And, you know, plus James doesn't like getting roosted and get dirty either. So he's just trying to find some other line and make something happen. Now, like I said he, he might have something for these guys. The question is how long. He's definitely not feeling that well, but it looks good right at the moment. Side by side through the ruts now. Different ruts, different path. But James Bubba Stewart with the inside line on the left-hander that came up out of one of those S-sections takes over the number four spot. Now he's got Kevin Windham in front of him and not far. But uh, Timmy Ferry's not going to lay down for him either. He's going to come right back up behind James Stewart. Ferry, I, I talked about in the first moment, he's been riding a lot faster lately. He's finally healthy. I've seen him in some testing. He looks about as fast as his teammate Chad Reed a few of the times. I actually made a comment to him. He goes, well, I'm just healthy for once. And he's able to start to show his real riding ability. I think these guys got a little bit of edge on them, but it's got to be encouraging for Timmy who's had such a long season last year of injuries. He's kind of riding mid-pack to be actually be able to really race with these guys now. And I thought James would have pulled away more than this by now. Looking good. James Bubba Stewart took the position, but ever since then, Timmy Ferry's been right behind him. We go up and take a look at how far behind third place they are. There's Kevin Windham on his Honda four-stroke, and just in front of him, it's Chad Reed, and some distance in front of Reed, it's Ricky Carmichael. So we've got a race here in Moto2, unlike uh, the first time around when Carmichael was all alone. Look at how fast, man. You know what? Beautiful to watch how smooth he is through there and how high he gets his foot. He's anticipating how deep that rut's going to be, and then just jumps all the way down that hill over one of the braking bumps, so it doesn't foul with him getting into the rut straight. Able to get a good, rock, strong run up the hill. Very crucial for James on 250 to get out and over that step up clean, so he can get all that power to the ground up the hill where these guys are pulling him on 450. Starting to step away just a little bit from Timmy Ferry. Here's Chad Reed, and uh, he is running in second position right now. We don't see Ricky Carmichael in front of it because Carmichael started to open up a gap and Chad Reed has got enough of a problem trying to hold off Kevin Rimmel for second. Well, what was encouraging to see Kevin do was when he jumped in behind Ricky in that first moto, he, he showed he had the speed. He didn't stay there the whole moto. He probably, you know, there was no reason to. I would have just to bother Ricky a little bit and let him know, hey, that second moto is going to be tough on you. And, uh, you know, he decided to lay up a little bit and save his energy for this moto. And he's going to need it to fight Chad. He seems to be doing better and better as the day progresses. Amazing how deep the ruts are there. Then you've got bumps to contend with. James Bubba Stewart, look how much faster he came through that same section than Kevin Windham. Yeah, he's on the gas, but here's Ricky Carmichael. He makes it look so easy with how smooth he is. Chad Reed is really not that far behind, still in contention. But as long as he and uh, Windham are going to be racing, Carmichael can slip away. Look at Bubba Stewart go. Woo! This kid, is, he came by me yesterday in practice near the finish line. It was just like, what in the heck just went past me? It was so noisy. The people were screaming. He was lightning fast. It was through here. He actually tripled, tripled it, landed in the berm wide open. 
scrubbed the face of this jump so hard he turned the steering to the lock. And everyone was just left standing there in disbelief and screaming, and he was still slower than Carmichael. So it just gives you an idea of how hard he has to ride that 250 to maintain with these guys on the big 450. Yeah, Bree, Kevin Windham, and now James Bubba Stewart. You call it a battle for second three ways here as Wyndham starts to make up some ground on Reed. I think he's studying that number 22 Yamaha and has found a weakness he can exploit. Well, these guys battled last year a little bit, and Kevin got the nod, so as long as he can stay in contact with Chad, I think his confidence will stay intact. James isn't bothering him just yet, but the story here is Brian Carmichael pinching away. And with that, we'll take a short commercial break. We'll watch this battle for second position. Everybody else at trackside trying to do their best. They're right. The Prairie City Recreational Park near Sacramento, California. The AMA Motocross Series continues with Ricky Carmichael looking for to go two for two here at Hangtown. He already won the first moto in convincing fashion. He has a pretty sizable lead here and could be on his way to another first overall. Yeah, I don't see any way anybody's going to catch him now. His gap is, you know, half what he had the first moto, partially because all the contenders are back there. They didn't have problems this time. But still, I mean, it's enough time for him to stall the bike in one of these ruts, start it, and keep going. And leaders are the second place battle. When they come through, they wouldn't even realize he had a problem. Chad Reed and Kevin Lindham speaking of the battle for second. Lindham making some progress right there and almost gets a wheel alongside Reed and stalls out a little bit in the right-hander. Now Lindham falls in line there in the same rut there, and he's looking for an opportunity. Oh, he's got the inside line here, and Chad Reed holds him off, but here comes Windham on a real hurry. He'll have the inside in the next corner if he can keep it thin, and it works. Yeah, some of the riders don't want to go wide in that sweeper because it's, it's just too long of a racetrack, but in that particular case right there, Kevin just drifted over the main line and positioned himself to the inside in the next corner, and Chad couldn't square him back off. Heard the big crowd really come alive here as Kevin Lindham made a pass for second position. They haven't seen a lot of passes for position yet today in the 250 motocross. But now Chad Reed falling back just a little bit to gather himself. Come uh, after uh, Wyndham again. Here comes James Bubba Stewart. Reed's going to have that to worry about here shortly. No, he doesn't look the same as he did earlier, though. He just doesn't have quite have the snap. He's a little bit sloppier than usual. I, I just don't think he feels good, Brian. You know, I mean, uh, normally he'd be battling with those guys, but it's either the line, something's not quite right with him, and otherwise he'd be in the middle of this right here. And I kind of get the feeling that Chad was like, I'll hold Kevin off as long as I can, but once Kevin made that pass, it looks like he's still trying to hold James off, but he don't think, he doesn't look like he has anything for Kevin. This is a bummer. Oh, Timmy Ferry is running his fifth position right now, but he's off the track, and the machine is not running. He's going to try to give it a kick here, but it could be that problems are going to take Timmy Ferry right out of this race when he had a good finish going. That's a bummer, too, because I just talked about how, his, you know, everything's starting to run right in his program. He's healthy, and then the bike lets him down. That's, you know, all these riders may have a problem like that through the season. They got, you know, 22 more motos to go after this, and anything can happen. So you just got to stay in it. Keep your hopes up that the next motos and the next rounds are going to be better. Michael Byrne running in seventh position right now. He's got a little bit of a battle going on with uh, Ernesto Fonseca. Looks cool to see Ernesto on that big 450. I asked him, I saw him at the restaurant last night, and he said, hey, how do you like that thing? He just goes, it's fast. It's really fast. You know, last year he rode the 250, and, and uh, he's got great throttle control, really good lines. He's able to hop over braking bumps. He's a little finesse, and I think he's able to use that power to his advantage, but he's still getting used to how fast it is. Great love fast motorcycles. Be careful what you ask for. Make it faster, they say, and when the mechanics do, it might be a little bit of a surprise. So Ernesto Fonseca and Michael Byrne battling for position here in Hangtown. Burn sandwiched in between all these 450s on his 250, just like Stewart. Kind of surprised, actually, that the Kawasaki didn't just hurry up a little bit and try to get their 450 program together. But, you know, that, that must say a lot for them and the confidence they have in their 250. You know, they, they got pretty good starts, uh, both starts. Stewart was in the top five or six, so it's not going to be as bad as I thought, but still a lot of work on that two-stroke. Burn in seventh position on the two-stroke Kawasaki, along with Ernesto Fonseca on the four-stroke Honda. Yeah, the uh, rather diminutive-sized Fonseca and a big bike. That's what you need these days, it seems like. Good close battle here inside the top ten. And you see, these guys are trying as hard as they can. They're in a battle. They're riding hard, but 
You can see a difference, though. When you watch Carmichael go through that same section, then you get a look at these guys, and there's an obvious a big difference there. And Stewart is starting to drop back now. Yeah, he's got a game of ground. He's losing it, and I think you're right. James Stewart just does now. He puts a hand up in case somebody's behind him. And it appears as though uh, James Stewart may be making a decision here about whether to continue up on the pegs like that for as long as he is. We're not used to seeing that. I think he's looking for an exit here. Uh, he's, he's put his arm up at the Kawasaki team manager back there, Bruce Sternstrom, who's standing outside that sweeper. Just probably a gesture like, man, it, it ain't happening. You know, uh, he's got such a gap on the guys behind him, he can keep going. No. And, you know, it looks like he's not going to No, it's not going to happen here. His body language is telling us that he was going to, you know, at least give in, throw in the towel here a little bit. Maybe hold station, but even that doesn't seem to be possible today for James Bubba Stewart. Battling not only uh, recovering from injuries, but as we have already said, he didn't feel well today either, and those two are going to take him out of this race. It's too bad. I know a lot of the fans will be disappointed. James Stewart will return to race another day against Ricky Carmichael, who is unbeatable here in this season opener. What a beautiful line he just had through that set. He's getting the track more and more wired as the race goes on. And I can remember that feeling and sometimes you get the white flag, you're like, dang it, man, I love this track. I want to keep going. Well, the track's getting worse, but Ricky's getting better. He's got a big lead with three laps to go. The motocross championships have been brought to you by Suzuki. Lightweight, superior power, incredible handling. It's why champions choose Suzuki. And by Honda, the company that defines performance in motorcycles, ATVs, personal watercraft, and scooters. The man owns Hangtown. In 2005, Ricky Carmichael on his Suzuki, just putting it to everybody here today. Once, with a little bit of help from his friends who all fell down, and this time all by himself. Yeah, I mean, this, nobody has really, a, other than probably Stewart and... No, let me just go back and change that. You know, Stewart was sick, and Chad Reed bumped his head on this downhill double. He's getting ready to jump in practice. And Kevin went out the shift lever torn off. But you know what? It, it always seems to be something, and Ricky always seems to be the guy that it doesn't happen to. So, you know, there's, there's something going on there when he talks about you make your own luck. He, he puts himself in the right positions to have these kinds of results. When you look at laps led today, he's leading them all. Here we have Heath Moss and also the Juice right behind him, putting in two good performances here. This young man from the Republic of Estonia is uh, beginning to make a bit of a name for himself, even with a three-digit number. Yeah, crazy name at that. I asked Jim Hawley, I'm like, what is it? Is it juice? Is it juice? He goes, well, it's actually juice, but we call him juice. I'm like, he took his goggles off, I just noticed. No goggles. There's Jim right there. <laughs> Cheering his man on. It is Yus Lansu from Chatsworth, California. That's what he calls home Look right at now. the intensity, Brian. Look at that. But now he's running there. He's tired. He's going to need to recover after this race, you know? And this kid, he, you know what I find interesting about him is that he doesn't know what boss is like as he plays, makes the pass on him. He doesn't know his, his competitors out there. I mean, this is somewhat new to him. He rode Glen Helen last year, but that's all the experience he has. So he's just going, you know what? I'll go as fast as I can, and we'll add that all up when it's over with. And when they add that up, he may slide into a fifth overall. It's, I'm trying to do my math right now, and that's probably why Jim's out there waving the towel. When Jim waves the towel and makes that face, you better pick it up, otherwise you get a face in after the, when it's all over. Watching Kevin Windham, who is uh, quite the technician himself, made the pass on Chad Reed, and now parked himself in the runner-up position. He, too, will get a good overall finish, especially if he would have had a better finish in, in motor number one. But no one's going to match a win and a win. That's going to be good for first overall for Ricky Carmichael. He's still pretty aggressive here on this final lap, despite having a huge lead. Not quite as big as he did in Moto 1, but he's got plenty of room. Uh, you've already got people mumbling perfect season with his performance today. Well, as well they could. And with the white flag, he heads for the last lap here. Perfect season. He's done that twice. And as we said, 65 in the last 70 motos that he's ridden. And we're going to make it, uh, what, 67 out of 72 here today as he gets some encouragement from the Suzuki mechanics along the track top. You know, it's pretty cool, too, talking to the Costa, his team manager, who, you know, made this all happen. It's, he just goes, you know what, he tests the bike, and it gets to a certain point. He goes, all right, guys, it's up to me. 
you know, and, and uh, he goes, it's really nice to have a rider that's not only great to work with, but takes the responsibility. There's a lot of riders these days that say, that, well, this bike and the tire and the suspension and my arms pumped up, and Ricky doesn't have excuses like that. And, you know, when he comes past the mechanics area and points to all those guys standing there waving and happy, he really appreciates everybody at the shop. He gives them little trips to out back and stuff like that. Just his ways of appreciating the people that make his job easier out there. So, I mean, you're looking at Ricky Carmichael, probably at his best ever. Well, it's one thing for a mechanic to hand the bike to a rider to say, okay, just ride the darn thing. It's as good as I can make it. And quite something else for the rider himself to say, okay, guys, thanks a lot. It's up to me now. That's exactly what Ricky Carmichael has done here today. We don't know how good the bike is. We do know how good Ricky is. Uh, he talked about on the podium you know, after the first moto going, it's going to be survival out there. The second moto, it's hot. And he lives in Tallahassee. It's pretty hot and humid down there. He has a little bit of an edge. Chad Reed bought a house down there. Of course, with Wyndham being, you know, from down the south, he's, he's dealing with hot and humid. But I don't know if they're doing the same workouts in that heat and humidity as Ricky is. And he's pretty comfortable in his fitness and calling everybody out, going, it's going to be survival out there. And when he says that, he, he means it. And he survived better than everybody else, probably, you know, because of his confidence level and his training program. The consummate survivor, he didn't survive, he prevailed here today. He is going to win two out of two motos, continue his streak, and start another one, perhaps, for a perfect season. Ricky Carmichael on the Suzuki, outdoor win number two in the 2005 season. He's still fast when he just cruises around. Look at that. He flows through that berm faster than when we were showing battles with the Dayloff and Boss early in the first moto. These guys were struggling through all this stuff. He's just messing around right now in his final lap, looking around, and it's still faster than about three-quarters of the riders out there on the racetrack that are charging for position at this moment. Well, his lap times have been so much faster than everyone else. It's putting two, three, four. Well, you know better than I do. How many seconds a lap that Carmichael has taken out of everybody? You add up the number of laps. That's the margin of victory for Carmichael, and he's slowing down right now. Only lap riders for company. Yeah, he's just looking back there to see who's where, and he's going to be weary when he finds out Stewart didn't finish the moto. You know, I mean, to, to win a moto and have somebody is that good in it that doesn't finish, you know, kind of weird. Well, we have yet to see a true head-to-head -head battle between those two because at the tail end of the Supercross season, Ricky Carmichael was protecting his championship lead, and Stewart was winning races. Here are the Honda results, the moto results. Carmichael wins them this time, and Chad Reed 3-3. That'll put him second overall by my calculations as we look at the rest of the top ten. Ricky Carmichael has proven once again he is the man to beat, and no one did it here today. Carmichael, it is two for two at Hangtown, but let's hear from our third place. Yeah, you know, this morning on the first lap, I uh, hit my head pretty hard, and you know, it's it's ne never never really done that before, and uh, kind of scared me, and just had to limp through the day. You know, Ricky rode great, but uh, you know, I think we're better than what we showed we were today. But uh, you know, we'll, we'll work hard. Yamaha is doing a great job, and all the guys at Thor and Parsons, and guys at Scott, Bridgestone, and these Amps Mobile. So uh, I'm happy to uh, you know to get out of the day with the way I was feeling. Our Honda point standings, of course, have Ricky Carmichael atop the chart with Chad Reed and David Fuleman tied at 40 apiece. Now let's hear from the man who won it all. The media was predicting the perfect storm between you and a couple of other riders, primarily you and James Stewart. And as always, here you are, standing tall. The victor, congratulations on just an amazing, an amazing win. It's a brilliant way to open the season. Yeah, awesome way to open the season. I tell you, we've been working hard, especially the last two weeks. You know, we had last weekend off, and uh, you know, there was a lot of a lot of pressure on on Suzuki. You know, I had an undefeated season last year, and uh, they definitely want to keep the thing going, and uh, that's what they did. I'm uh, really happy for the team, and. Uh, Heck of a ride today, really happy. Yeah, you know, we could refer to you as the more things change, the more they stay the same. So, uh, yeah, that's, uh, you know, I think with the change, it keeps me motivated and keeps me going. And uh, like I said earlier, I'm just glad to do it for Suzuki. You know, it's been a while that, since they've been up here, and uh, I'm glad to be the guy to do it. Yeah, Suzuki has won championships in recent years, but it's been since their very early 80s since they were a dominant force, and Ricky's put them back on top. We'll expect to see more as round number two of the motocross season gets started. For Rebecca Staub and David Bailey, I'm Brian Trevor. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time.